Thank you, Jim, and some of you know, Jim Bailey, that is, will appreciate the title today. Uh, uh, anybody would if, uh, if there's fire danger, right? But I'm going to begin with kind of a, <clears throat> a gruesome story, a gruesome church story, even. You know? This says, uh, the church service ended at the Lutheran Church in New Sweden, Maine, as everyone, quote, passed the peace. It's not our West Coast saying, but in New Orleans. It was the first Sunday after Easter, and the 50 people in attendance headed into the fellowship hour to have some coffee. Some of the people complained that the coffee was bitter, but people usually complain about church coffee, so they didn't think much about it until some people began to get violently ill. By the end of the day, 16 people were hospitalized, and one of them would die by the next morning. Police discovered that arsenic had been dumped into the 30-cup coffee maker. I almost brought out our 30-cup coffee maker <laughs> just for a visual effect. <laughs> um, and it made the, this out to be the nation's worst case of mass arsenic poisoning. The next shock was that a well-respected member of the church, 53-year-old Danny Bondison, a potato farmer, was found dead at his home from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. He left a note implicating himself in the poisoning. The investigation is now expanding to other members of the Bondison family who police suspect may have been involved in the poisonings. The story behind the story at this point seems to be that there was a disagreement in the church about a communion table. For years, the church had a communion table that was against the wall, and the blessing of the bread and wine was done while facing the wall. The Bonison family had donated a new altar so that the bread and wine could be done while facing the congregation. But traditions die hard, and the board seemed unwilling to replace the old altar, even though a new one had been donated, because they did not want to offend some of those who wanted the bread and wine blessed while facing the wall, like it had been done uh, ever since. Speculation is that not only Bondison, but other members of his extended family had become as bitter as the church coffee and decided to teach some people a lesson. It was the Bondison family, sorry, was the Bondison family, uh, were they giving for the glory of God or for their own glory? There's a lot of poison going around because people get their eyes off of Jesus and onto the wrong things. So, is this an isolated event? Or do people, in fact, get their eyes off of Jesus and onto their own things? Squirrel! <laughs> Good example. I don't think Church talk. Well, since I've been here, it's been stronger at least. <laughs> so, you know, for weeks, every time I share from that devotion book, uh, he just seems to pound on the fact that there is trouble out there, but our real trouble comes from within. The sin that lives within us. And he you know, one other author says that it's as close as my elbow. You know, it's just right there all the time. And, and, and the thoughts that come in and, <clears throat> and the ideas. And in fact, uh, makes me think of this verse, Galatians 5, 26. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Well, envy, envy is pretty common. In fact, have you ever seen that show, uh, House Hunters? or House Hunters International, what happens when we see something a little nicer than what we have? Or something, whatever, you know, it creates this, in, it seems, can. You know, it's just near to us. Of course, it's natural, but it's 
not good. This conceited, uh, I looked it up for fun, and found out that a rapper's name, he changed his name to conceited. Or, or, <coughs> conceited or conceit, one of the two. Maybe, see, you know that guy? <laughs> He's pretty old, but he won't. No, he doesn't listen to that too much. Um, anyway, unduly, an unduly high opinion of yourself. Um, and that's easy to do. Our self is high on the priority list a lot of the time. You know, we brush our teeth and shower and eat and things that our self needs, after all, you know. But how, how do we control that pendulum? Well, this is... This is part of what didn't happen here somehow in this fellow in the church, 53. You know, not out of his mind, uh, let's say, senile or... <laughs> uh, anyway. Seems to be like the book of uh, Hebrews. In every chapter of Hebrews, there's a, a nice warning in there that warns us against the troubles that come our way just every day. Even at uh, Ephesians 6 when it talks about uh, no, it's Galatians. I always get those two mixed up. Galatians 6, the armor of God. Why do we need the armor of God? Because our battle is not against flesh and blood. It's not what we can see. It's against the rulers and powers and the, the dark forces that are all around us and yet we do not see them. And so uh, if we don't pay attention who was talking about that, Randy. <laughs> uh, if we don't, you know, I'm going to talk about church today. Uh, if, if we're not here, you know, I didn't even tell Randy, of course, what I was preaching about, and he got up and just gave a perfect intro about what happens if, if we take a big chunk of, of uh, our involvement with what God is giving out and meeting together. You know, it says Hebrews 10.25, let's not stop meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all more. You know, if we ask Randy, were you encouraged today at the end? What will we say? Or any of us, no doubt. Because it's a truth. And so God warns us, encourages us, don't stop meeting together. Keep on the coming. Because you need it. It'll help you. It helps you keep coming on the narrow way. Because why? It's hard. And few find it, he says. And so... I found this, uh, somebody wrote up of what church is not and what church is, and they said, church is not an ark for saving a select few, like Noah's Ark, eh? Church is not a ferry boat to take effortless passengers to the shores of heaven. <laughs> Sounds nice, right? Church is not a life insurance company with no obligation on policyholders except the payment of a small annual premium. And church is not a social club welcoming certain people and excluding others from its fellowship. And finally, church is not a Sunday pleasure club for the providing of pleasant occupation on the day of rest. You know that, this was probably written 50, 100 years ago. Who knows? But if we don't get it before our eyes, and, and sharpen the axe, it might become dull when we can think off course. So church is, on the other hand, a lifeboat for the rescue of sin-wrecked and perishing souls. I like that. I like it because it, it helps us pinpoint ourselves on the map. In fact, were we, or are we, sin-wrecked? That's harsh, powerful words, isn't it? Sin wreck. Did you really need saving after all by the one who went to the cross on your behalf to pay for those sins? Well, yes. If, if you really were saved, if, we're, if we have sin, we're wrecked and cannot get to heaven any other way than by the way of what Jesus provided. Going to the cross on our behalf, right? And perishing. Perishing souls. If I don't get saved, we perish. Um, and, and this fire retardant, it, it's not, uh, you know, there's plenty of those church sayings of, you know, 
smoking or non-smoking, you know, after death, you know, smoking or non-smoking, you know, it, it seems funny at the time, but that's not really where I'm going uh, with that. But the fact that we, indeed, everyone needs to get saved and find out what Jesus did for them and be saved by him or else they say, no thanks. I don't believe in that. Well, fine. You'll find out at death who's right. We all will. Second, church is a family in which love and service are expected from each member to each member. Hmm. That's such a little straighter, doesn't it? Love and service expected from each to each. Okay. Third, church is an organization, an organized community whose activities are to help toward continual growth and development. Continual. Jesus keeps talking even after you get your by mark card, right? Even after you get saved and baptized and well then he keeps talking and says and for you followers this is what I'm saying and we pay attention and many pay attention some maybe not maybe this fellow earlier he didn't pay too close attention I'm not sure uh, next church is a company of believers who have found the one way of life and obey the one Lord of life there is one way to heaven. It's through Jesus Christ. It's the only way. Jesus says it. It's in John 10. And finally, church is a union of those who love. Now, I remember when I was a kid, or when my kids were kids, and we, we read uh, the Christopher Church Mouse books. Um, and one of the stories, so there's a book with about five stories in it. Could have brought it. Um, anyway, in it, it says... Um, Christopher was complaining that he didn't have any friends, you know, and, and his mom suggested that he uh, be more loving and so make friends. And he says, well, I feel loving. And she says, well, that's not the same thing. You know, someone once said the best sermons are children's sermons. Because he kind of unarms us about the message, you know. And if, if we might feel loving, by ourselves, but what is it looking like in shoe leather? You know, is it actually being loving? That's what church is. It gives us that opportunity. So the church was born in the New Testament. The word church is not mentioned in the Old Testament at all. And so God calls those whom he has saved the church. Right? It's the word uh, Ecclesia in Greek. It's used 82 times in the New Testament. And I'm going to be in 1 Corinthians and I want to just share uh, three or four here of places where a church is mentioned, starting with chapter 1 and verse 2, where it says, the church of God, is the first words in the verse, the church of God to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, that's us, by the way. If, if, you, if you and I are saved in the church, then we're sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy. That's us too, right? That's describing how the church is. Called to be holy and together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. That's us, right? We're calling on the name of our Lord. And we come together and do it. I mean, this just couldn't have been better to have Randy get up here and say how much he's missed. You know, it's like a meal. I mean, maybe you don't all know if you were here last Sunday or any Sunday what the message was about, but if you missed then you could say, yeah, I missed the second Sunday of February or something, because it was big. It was something missing out of your life. You didn't come and worship and sing and pray and hear the message and, and meet with the other believers and how God meant for us to do it so that we could be stronger and make it and get, follow as He means for us to follow. And so, the next from 1 Corinthians 4.17 says, For this reason I am sending... To you, Timothy, my son, whom I love, 
who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of all my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. So Paul's world revolved around building in a church. It was never individual. Never. Uh, it was meant to come together as the church. And so, <clears throat> in the next chapter, 5, verse 12, what business is it of mine to judge those outside the church, Paul writes? Are not those uh, are you not to judge those inside, he says? In other words, when, <clears throat> when we're in the church, when we're in fellowship, when we're part of God's family, and you see me hit my thumb with a hammer, and I say words that are normally spoken from our front, you know, and, and then Jess comes later and says, Dave, you know, in private first, to say my a little bit. That, that wasn't right. I said, you're right. You know, and I helps me repent of my sin. You know, so when we're together, we rub shoulders and we see, hey, he does this and he does that. And Randy really values coming to church. And you know, this sort of thing helps us, doesn't it? That helps us follow all that Jesus has to say, our Lord and Savior. Again, there is only the church with Paul. He, he mentions it. I didn't see how many times just in the book of the letter he writes to the Corinthians. But there was at least a dozen. Of, of, he's just talking about the church. All his teaching, all of it, is about the church. And finally, in the end of the chapter, chapter 14, uh, <clears throat> he says, 14 verse 12, he says, So it is with you, since you are eager to have spiritual gifts, Try to excel in gifts that build up the church. So he's talking about the spiritual gifts here, that each one of us has been given a spiritual gift. And he, and he uses the illustration of a body. And everyone's not an ear or an eye. Uh, whatever the part of the body. We're all a part of the body of Christ. I'm going to get to that. And this is to build up the church. Every one of us counts for that somehow. Every one. It's wonderful. From the youngest in here, which is Roland this morning, to, <clears throat> I'll call myself the oldest, I just better not to go there. <laughs> but um, uh, we have a role. And even if our abilities, like, like mine, are this back trouble, I can't do what I used to be able to do for right now. Well, but I sure can pray. How important is that for? What, I, how many times do I take? I say it once a week. I bet. I say, you know, if you aren't praying for that person, nobody is. You know, your family member or somebody obscure uh, that you know of that's brought up somehow. <clears throat> if you're not well, so be it. Because that's part of the gifts that God has given us. In fact, this verse is so fascinating to me because when I when I learned of it at first when I was a kid, it sounded like we were all given something. We just want to discover that one thing and utilize that. But Paul here says, since you are eager to have spiritual gifts, try to excel in gifts that build up the church. Does that sound like if you have one, you can't have two? It doesn't. Sounds like you can branch out a little bit. Maybe learn a little about this or that. Uh, whatever it may be. Maybe you're good at praying. Maybe you're good at calling. You could call on the phone and talk to somebody and encourage them. Who would have thought? That's a gift. The gift of encouragement. Like Barnabas. So. Next, I, I've already mentioned it. I led into it there. But um, what's another name for the church? What is it also called in the New Testament. The body, right? The body of Christ. The body of Christ. We're the body of Christ. It's mentioned over and over again. And here from Romans 7, verse 4, uh, Paul writing again, he says, So my brothers, you also died to the law through the body of Christ. The body of Christ. 
We're in Christ. We're in the body of Christ. It is not an institution. It's not like the Elks Club or uh, any club, any group. It's living. It's the organism of Christ. It is, he is living and active among us. And we are in the body of Christ. Uh, the verse finishes, that you might belong to one another, to him who raised, who was raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit to God. We are in Christ that we would belong to each other. It, it, he really raises the bar here, doesn't he? Mm. I should turn this ring around a little more. Squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> um, Um, just in this occurrence, uh, the verse says that you die to the law through the body of Christ. That, that's an encouragement for the day. Maybe that's something that would stick with you as we go out from here. God says in Romans 7:4 that I died <clears throat> to the law through the body of Christ. Wow, that's profound. That's important. That, that's me. He means that for all believers the church to believe besides the fact that we belong to one another besides the fact <clears throat> uh, to him who was raised from the dead in order that we might bear fruit to God wow there's instruction and encouragement and focus for our day what we're supposed to be doing and then finally 1 Corinthians 12 27 Uh, here that says now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. I mean that's just a straight up statement. You know every day we either affirm or deny our identity. You know if somebody is weird and different we say well that's not like me. You know? Or if somebody does something else we say uh, I like that. I'm, I'm like that. I, I own a gun, you know, or I cook like this, or I'm a cook. I mean, we, we affirm or deny our identities all the time. It's just constant to reaffirm, you know, where we're at, how we stand. It's like plotting ourselves on the map. And here, the Word of God, 1 Corinthians 12, 27, now you are the body of Christ. And each one of you is a part of it. Here we are together. And we're not the only ones. We're joining, in fact, hundreds of millions. No, maybe. At least millions. <laughs> God's the one that knows who each one is. And if we indeed have turned to Him wholeheartedly, and I'll get to that. But, um, that should settle that. That we're in the body of Christ. His church, His body. And so, um, one more point about the church here from Ephesians. <clears throat> I didn't get Ephesians in here. Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 say that he gave, uh, he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of so, he's talking about the gifts given and how they're used and why they're used. He gave to the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry. That's all of us. We are to be equipped for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ. That's our job description. In fact, to use whatever gifts we are to love one another, which does this, right? And so, we get to our passage, which is uh, 1 Corinthians 3, and starting with verse 10. <clears throat> now, at the beginning of the chapter, he's talking about the divisions. Uh, there's actually divisions in churches even back then, right? Uh, besides these days, apparently. That was 20 years ago that that 
Chair Chap back in Maine with the hours thinking that. And, um, and here we are. It started even with them in Corinth. There was trouble in the church, and there was divisions. And they started up, some would say, well, I follow Paul. And the others, well, Apollo said this, I like Apollos. And then, well, no, I follow Christ. And then Paul brings up, is Christ divided? Did Paul die for you? You know, no. Look, if we're part of the body of Christ. So he's preaching just the kind of sermon I'm preaching today. Anyway, then he gets to verse 10 and says, According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I lay a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. So, when he talks in these two verses, he's talking about he laid a foundation and someone else is building on it. The someone else is us. We build upon it. We, if, if the foundation is Christ Jesus, if we have surrendered our lives to him, as it says, to repent and be baptized, and your sins will be forgiven, and we receive the Holy Spirit. We believe in Christ. Belief is the first step. And we have Christ as our foundation. And then, yes, we keep following and saying, oh, right, this is what He wants me to do. And we do that. And we blow it. And then we confess our sins and He forgives us. And we just keep doing what He's saying. That's building on foundation of Jesus Christ and it's our call and it goes on 12 and says now if anyone that's you and me builds on the foundation with here's the six the six building materials okay if you build with gold silver precious stones wood hay or straw those are the building materials and he goes on and says uh, let me do the verse again now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay straw, each one's work will become manifest for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done <coughs> Who are these people? They're the ones in the church, in the body of Christ. It's us. It is implied that that's what the letter was written to. That's what we are. We're the church. We're in Christ. And here, the, we go out in our day. We're going to, in a little bit, we're going to go out from here. We have the week in front of us. Um, and we're going to do work. And we're going to have an attitude. And we're going to do all that we do. Now, this is saying that we're going to be building on that foundation. And what does that look like? Does that look like we just do Sunday morning church and we forget him the rest of the week? Well, that's, that's wood, hay, or straw, by the way. Right? Because the fire is going to come on. This says, how does this say? It says, each one's work will become manifest. How does, does anyone have an NIV? I didn't look up to NIV. What does it say there? Shown for what it is. Say it His work will be shown for what it is. His work will be shown for what it is. Because the fire is going to be turned on. Okay. Now when we know this is going to happen, when we know there's a reckoning, a, a judgment day, a, a day like this, when our work will become manifest, okay. You know, you remember my rope with the little electric tape and the uh, Pastor Francis Chaney points to the you know, the rope's all going this way, and here's the tip. And he says, here's our life. It's the electric tape. And he says, he says, and some of you are are putting all your hope in the little end part of the of your life right here, you know. And, and it's funny, right? Because here's all this rope. And and what Paul is saying is, oh, well, right after that electric tape, there's going to be fire <laughs> to test our work. And if we built with fire retardant, that's the message title today, right? Of gold and silver and precious stones. 
okay, that kind of work endures. Wood, hay, and straw will not in a fire. Right, Jim? Okay. So, have any of you in about July noticed the haystacks in the Willamette Valley up there? The big ones, you know, they, they have those huge bales and then they build these huge barns and put it in there until the price is just right and then they get it off the market. Okay, that's how it goes. Now, when those, how many miles would you say that you can see that straw? Because that's what it is. They, they get the grass seeds out of it and then they bale the straw, right? Straw. Okay, how many miles? Two? Five? Probably five miles away you can see those huge haystacks, can't you? Now, everyone might see your work and you might be busy and seeming to do good work. Now, if you have gold sitting on top of that haystack, and it probably, you know, gold is, we don't have much gold, gold's expensive, but this is saying if we do things for God, maybe it's only God that sees the gold. Because gold is small. Everyone won't see it like a haystack. You get my comparison here? Because we, we do what God wants and He sees the gold. And He's going to turn the fire on uh, when He makes it become manifest. And all of our, whatever we've done in our life, you know, it's like Steve's, you know, he has a torch thing that, that's an awesome, you know, and that burns it all up. Anyway, God has one of those. Bigger, I suppose. And He's going to light it all. And it's going to either burn, and nothing will survive, and there'll be no reward. Or there's going to be some gold, which is fire retardant, and silver, which is fire retardant, and precious stone, which are fire retardant. And they last, and they make it through the fire. You see what I'm saying, don't you? So, the next verse... <laughs> is 14. It says, if the work that anyone has built on, if the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you. Okay, we'll finish with that last verse in a minute. But you see how he just spells it out for Rowan, do you get all this? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How old are you, Rowan? Twelve? Yeah, almost thirteen. Almost thirteen. And Rowan gets it all. I love that about the truth of God's word is that it's not rocket science. And he tells us plain as day about what's going to be happening. And it helps us focus that yes, we're in the church, and yes, He has stuff for us to do, and if I do God's stuff, it's like gold, and it's going to survive the fire. If I do my own stuff, though I believed in Jesus Christ, but don't really follow, it says here uh, that you will be saved. Yeah, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. That doesn't sound great. And so you choose. And then he says, as he finishes, verse 16 there again, do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? It's the final point today of the truth. You know, we're, we feel awful small and uh, troubles come along. I, I, of course, got this trouble for almost two months now and it's a little worse. Something's pressing on some nerve and it uh, really makes this muscle crazy right here. And Wow, it's like a shock at 110. But I love a pause like this. I mean, I, I mentioned that because I'm not alone, obviously. Uh, you, you know, it just comes out, like, yeah, I have that. Yeah, I have that. You know, we, there's trouble in this world and it, it visits us. And yet, do you not know that you are God's temple? That's good. That, 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 do you need encouragement?
encouragement for the day? You know, the temperature with the pandemic brought things up a notch. And then this war crap, you know, has happened. Oh, and what's going to happen? What if, what if, what if? And don't, you know, I encourage you again, don't watch just the regular national news. They're just wanting you to watch. So they tell you a certain way. But my point is, things are up a notch. And if we hold on because we're together, we look at each other, we have the opportunity. You know what I love? That Steve thought it was praiseworthy to say, man, I found a good mechanic. You know why he said it? Because he's in the church. Hey, we're helping each other. We're, we're paying attention a little more. Because we're, you know, we read that in our men's Bible study in uh, Galatians 6. It says, especially to those in the household of faith that we're supposed to love. Especially those in the household of faith. So I just encourage you to look around and call somebody this week if you haven't. And, and just say, you know, just want to check in on you. Let you know that you're God's temple and, and, uh, and that God's Spirit dwells in you. I mean, be weird like that. Uh, I mean, if the temperature's up, then we can come up and match it with hearing what God says and doing it. Because it matters. It matters for eternity that the, stuff, the fire's going to get turned on to every day of our life. And boy, I, I just cringe at what the, my early life will look like. Because it'll provide a good flame, you know. Ooh. And yet, I have today and this week to adjust and make gold, silver, and precious stones. That's good fire retirement. Amen? Amen. Let's bow in your prayer. God, thank you. Thank you for your encouragement. We need encouragement, obviously. And this world is in all sorts of situations and, and, and there's so many, but you've given us a, a, a nice little church where we can look at one another in the eye and know each other and help one another and, and know that we're together in this and that you keep talking and you keep encouraging and you take us beyond the electric tape to eternity and realizing how much more what no eye has seen or ear heard or the mind imagined what you have in store for those who love you. Wow! May that just come alive because your spirit is in us who believe that we are your church here, your body right here. May your blessing, may you live through us, in us, and bless us to be a blessing. May we bless you with producing this fire retardant this week. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's stand together and sing our song. Today.